The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Pusa Malaysia's webinar. And thank you very much for coming. My name is Edna, and I'm the moderator for today's webinar. Tonight's webinar is titled How to Source Money-Making Information from Pusa Marketplace. I want to thank all of you for joining this webinar. Before I begin, I want to do an audio check. So if all of you can hear me clearly, can you please click the raise hand button on the control panel? Yeah, if all of you can hear me clearly, please click the raise hand button on the control panel. Yeah, the hand, the hand signal. Okay, all right. Uh, some of you still have not raised your hand. Okay, all right, so excellent. All of you can put down your hands now. And this webinar is brought to you by Busa Malaysia and today's topic is quite special. We will be showing you a live demo on how you can source information easily using Busa Malaysia's platform called Busa Marketplace. So today we are going to share with you how you can find relevant information and what are some of the basic valuations you should know. And this year, we have various topics which will help you to learn more about the stock market. And before we begin, uh, let me change to my slide. Eh? Before we begin, there's a disclaimer. So whatever we share in this webinar is only for educational purposes only, and in no way we give any buy or sell signal. So if you buy, any sell, buy or sell anything, it's at your own risk. Eh? And as mentioned earlier, this year, we have a series of very interesting topics and today we have reached our third series and next month we have principles of value investing on the 3rd of april so look out for our email and uh, for the registration links uh. if you want to listen to the previous webinars please email us and we will send you a link so you can listen to it so for today's webinar it is 90 minutes long and consists of two segments the first segment is a 60 minute content by our speaker followed by a 30-minute Q&A. So today we are very honoured to have invited a very young and experienced investor. He is the founder of busaking.com.my, an online platform that compiles 900 public listed companies data. And he's also a renowned author of three best-selling books. So he's also a freelance writer, columnist and regular webinar presenter. So without further ado, let me hand it to you, Ian. You hang on, I pass you the presenter. Okay. Hey, I, no, I think you did fantastic well. So fantastically well. Uh, um, considering that you told me that you have just, um, uh, this is your first time introducing me. So thank you so much for that. And by the way, those of you who are listening to me today, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, first of all, before I actually start my presentation, I would like to just uh, say a big thank you to Bursa Malaysia for allowing me to be here today. And um, I got plenty of things to share with you. So let me just show my screen. Okay, so can anyone actually see my screen? All right, so let me just go to the go straight to the point here. Okay, so I'll just uh, do a little bit more of introduction of myself, then we are right on our way. So first of all, Yes, I'm the founder of Bersaking.com.my. So currently, I'm actually serving a community of 4,000 plus retail investors. And uh, I actually produce all kinds of contents related to stock investing. And this is what I actually promote, which is value investing. Uh, Bersakingwebinar.com is actually an education membership website where I have actually developed myself. And this is actually a sister site of Bersaking.com.my. I'm also a columnist and a content producer for kclaw.com. All right, which is a popular personal finance blog in Malaysia. The fifth person is actually from Singapore and as well as Value Invest Asia. So the fifth person and the, and the value, in, and value Invest Asia is actually from Singapore. And they are also, um, we are actually like-minded friends uh, where we promote value investing both in Malaysia and Singapore. And here is actually the most important thing um, of my introduction, which is this. So basically I'm a dividend investor. So what does, a what does a dividend investor do is this. Um, I invest primarily, all right, or I derive my main investment income um, as dividend income. So that is actually my part of my investment income, which is dividend income. And currently up to date, all right, because I've actually compiled 
what I have actually bought in the past and all my dividend and all my dividend income. So this is actually my track record task bar, which is um, this is what I've achieved um, so far. My average portfolio yield is about 6.8% per annum. All right, so that means say every $100 I actually invest or uh, every 1,000 ringgit I invest, I'm getting around 68 bucks in dividend. All right, so this is actually me. And uh, right now I'm gonna jump straight into the presentation. And here I'm gonna just um, input to you five simple steps, all right? Five things that you need to know in order to maximize your um, usage of the tools given by Bursa Malaysia and as well as Bursa Marketplace. Okay, so there are five steps and I'm gonna go into step number one right away. So step number one is to actually know your objectives. Now, here's the thing. So I'm actually really, really blessed, really, really fortunate to be living in this country, Malaysia, because why? Because we get to actually, we get, um, we get to invest in some of the best um, businesses in the country and we need actually investment information, all right? Now, this is very important. So why, why do I say I'm blessed to be here in Malaysia? Is because we have Bursar Securities, we have Bursar Malaysia, whereby they actually, they actually compile. It's a place where you, I can actually compile a lot of investment information, which are very, very, very valuable. And I can actually process it and I can actually make a very informed investment decision from it. Now, with that said, okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing that I would like to actually impart to you today. First of all, if let's say um, there is Bursa Malaysia giving you the best tools, best research tools in the world, but you do not have an objective, you do not have um, an idea how to best use this uh, particular tool to actually make a profit from yourself, then the tool is actually pretty redundant. So that's why I believe that step number one, very important before we actually use the tool, is to get to know your investment objective. So for a start, how do you actually define your objectives? Okay, so I will actually break it down into three simple parts, all right, which is here. The first one is gain, the second one is skills, and the third one is time. So I think if you are listening to me, I think you can actually just uh, play around with me and we can, we can just uh, learn, share, and explore all this stuff together. So let me start with gain. So gain is this. So let's take a moment back and just ask ourselves, how do you intend to make money from the stock market? Okay, so this is actually a very important question because a lot of people say, oh, do you invest for dividend income or do you invest for capital gains? Some people say I invest for dividend income, which is actually pretty more certain. Whereas for capital gains, all right, then the next question is this, what is the capital, um, um, how much capital gains would you like to achieve? All right, now this is actually a very subjective question. This is a question where there's no right and wrong answer okay so this one takes some time it doesn't it's not like a one minute answer all right it doesn't take one minute to answer this kind of question it takes some some sort of a learning soul searching in order before you can actually answer truly answer this kind of question now for me i actually invest for dividend income okay oops and um my second priority is actually long-term capital appreciation this of course is what people want and um, of course, there's another way for people to actually um, gain in the stock market, which is to do some sort of a short term, short term trading. All right. So that's why I put there short term trading profits. Now, which of the three is actually suitable for you? Is it dividend income? Is it long term capital appreciation or is it short term trading profits? Now, if your gains, if your objectives are in regards to gains is actually different. All right. How you use Bursa Marketplace will be very, very different. Okay, so that's why um, you got to actually know what sort of what sort of gain or what sort of gain would you like to actually achieve from the stock market before you actually use this tool. Okay, so this is actually very important. Now I'm gonna move on to skills. So this is actually very important because if you don't have skills, then it's actually redundant to talk about the gains that you can actually achieve. Now, what are the skills that you need to have in order to in order to actually profit from the market consistently. Now, the keyword here is consistency because um, you do not want to just rely on luck itself to actually make money from the stock market. You don't want to make one or two good deals, all right? And then you lose it all in the next three or four more deals. You want your gains to be consistent. And that is why I believe that you are here today listening to me on uh, how you can actually profit from the stock market consistently, all right? So, which is a long-term thing. Now. 
there are two schools of thought when it comes to skills. The first one is actually dividend. The first one is actually fundamental analysis. So fundamental fundamental analysis is actually an analysis of the business performance. Okay. So this means to say, if you are talking about Air Asia, you want to know exactly what Air Asia is doing. What is it? Uh, how much sales has has it been generating over the last five to ten years? How much profits or losses has it made for the five for the past five to ten years and stuff like that? Okay, so that is actually fundamental analysis. Now there's another school of thought which is called technical analysis. So technical analysis is an analysis of the stock price. All right, so we are going to talk about stock price performance. All right, so this means to say we are talking at if you are looking at technical analysis, you don't just look at the company's business performances. Rather, we are looking at the charts whereby how do you actually um how do you actually assess whether this is a good time to buy, hold, or sell? So this is actually technical analysis. And then we got the third one, which is time. So how much time, all right, or energy do you have to manage your stock portfolio? Okay, so this is actually very, very important. All right, so let me give you an example. For instance, all right, let's talk about games. And let me just give you an example. Let's say we, one of you choose, um, I would like to uh, achieve, or I would like to gain from the stock market by doing trading. And I would like to do short term, short term kind of trading, let's say day trading or what. All right. So short term trading, short term means to say it could be in the span of days, it could be in the span of weeks, it could be as short as milliseconds. Okay. So let's say, let's keep it to day. All right. So that means to say you want to buy at 9 a.m. and then you want to sell at 3 p.m. Okay. So that is how you want to gain. The next question is, do you have the skills to do it? All right, so if you want to buy a stock at, three, at 9 a.m. and then you want to sell it at 3 p.m., that means to say you need to acquire, the skills that you need to acquire is actually technical analysis. All right, so this means to say you need to have the skills to actually analyze the charts. Now, if you do not have the skills to analyze the charts, then it's quite redundant for you to say, I would like to trade for short-term profits. Now, let's assume that you have this technical analysis skill. So now we move on to the time. All right, so how much time do you have to actually manage your portfolio? So let's say, for example, you are, you are an employee, all right, and you have a nine to five job or you have multiple businesses, all right, or like me, you have multiple um, various ways of making um, money or making a living. So you're actively involved in um, multiple business and you don't have time for all these things. So it's also quite redundant. It's also quite redundant for you to say, I want to uh, trade for short-term profits because you don't have time and energy for it. So can you see why gains, skills, and time has to be in unison? All right. So now if you are listening to me and you, ha you are basically an employee and you want to generate um, an additional source of income. So let's say, for example, today I'm going to share with you um, the things that I do and how I make my money, which is dividend income. All right, this is actually very suitable for people who are passive. Passive means to say you can actually do this at your own time, um, at a passive um, at a passive way. Means to say um, you can actually do the, do this on a part time basis. All right, so if you want to um, get dividend income or you want to actually invest for long term capital appreciation, the skills that you need is actually fundamental analysis. So this must be your core strength. All right. So if you don't have this particular strength, you can't actually do dividend investing, all right? So if you are one of those who do not know how to actually read financial reports and stuff like that, so it's best for you to first learn how to do fundamental analysis. Now, let's assume that you have it and you do not have much time. Uh, good news for you. You can actually do this on a uh, part-time basis or on a free time as you go kind of basis. So it's very, important for you to know your objectives and make sure it's in line with your skill sets or sets of skills and time. Okay, so for this webinar, let me just focus on what I do best, which is to make dividend income. And let's just assume that this is also your objective. And therefore, if let's say I'm investing for dividend income, so I'm gonna move into step number two. So what kind of information do I need? So I'm not gonna just go into Bursa Malaysia because um, there are plenty of information there. I visit the website nearly every single day and there are plenty of information 
and tools, the resources, the materials out there. So I need to be very clear about what I need first, okay? What is important to me as a dividend investor? So here I will break down into eight, uh, eight I have actually listed down eight um, information that I really need as to be good as a dividend investor. So the first one is company profile. So this is actually very important because I need to know what exactly the stock is doing. What kind of business is it doing? What kind of industry? So this is company profile, very important. Number two, um, as a dividend investor, I would like to see my income grow. Um, personally for me, it's like, it can be a quarter to quarter basis. It can be to yearly, yearly to yearly basis. So that means say every quarter, my dividend income must increase or every year, my dividend income must increase. So in order to do that, this two, three, and four will be very, very important. The, the sales must grow, which means revenue must grow consistently. Profits must also grow consistently. And of course, if you are thinking about dividend investing, you need positive cash flow. Now, with that said, I'm, I'm not going to just um, sidetrack. I'm not going to just sidetrack and uh, not sidetrack, sideline. All right. For those of you who are thinking about investing for long-term capital growth, I do. I also want to include you into this presentation. All right. So first of all, if you are a growth investor, investing for long-term capital appreciation, this four is also necessary. Okay. Why? Because if you are a dividend investor, you need to also have the stock to actually report consistent growth in sales and profits. And whereas cash flow, it needs to be positive. Why? For very different reasons. For a dividend investor, the positive cash flow is for, is for the stock to pay you dividends. No cash, no dividends. Okay? So that's why you need to look at cash flow. Uh, whereas for growth investor, positive cash flow is very important because you need cash to invest. All right, the stock needs abundant, uh, need to have abundant in cash flow for it to actually, in, for it to finance its future investment. All right, this is very important. If the company got no cash to invest, then the company may have to borrow, all right, or to raise more money from people like you and me, investors, through private, through private placements, rights issues, and stuff like that. Okay, so this is actually very important. Now, back to dividend investing. So the fifth one is dividend use. So this one is actually very important. Okay. And how do you calculate dividend use? I'm going to show you in a bit, in a while's time. Number six, dividend payout ratio. Also, I will share with you the formula later. Uh, this is actually where um, my secret reference is. All right. The number seven, the seventh information. All right. I will always find stocks that have tangible growth plan. So this is actually very important. So what do I mean by that? So first of all, we need to understand that past successes does not guarantee future successes, all right? But it has a resemblance. So the first thing to do is to find out the company's past record, whether it has done, whether it has been there, done that, all right? So that's why we look at the company's past record, all right? And usually I will look at, uh, there's a question that asks, um, that uh, people ask me, do I, do I look at the past 12 months only or do I look at the past five to 10 years? The answer is I look at both, all right? If you look at the past five to 10 years, that is the real past. And if you look at the past 12 months, then you are looking at the present, whether the, whether the stock is making money as of today, as of now. Now, tangible growth plan is for the future, okay? So I'm gonna share with you in this webinar um, the tricks that I use to actually find the, the, the actual materials that I actually find in a stock when it comes to their growth plan. So I'm going to just share with you all, all this stuff today. And finally, I'm going to talk about price trend. Okay. How do you actually use the information, the use, the information given at Bursa Marketplace to actually identify a stock's midterm price trend. All right. So let's go on to the formula. So I'm going to just do this very quickly because it's actually a very simple formula. So step 2.A, okay, to calculate dividend use. So just now, all right, I say here, I have actually give a brief introduction. My average portfolio yield is about 6.8%. Okay, so this is how you calculate dividend use. Okay, so you have dividends per share, and then you divide it by the current stock price, 
and then you get and then you multiply by 100 percent and there you go dividend use okay so i'm gonna just go through two examples very quickly so there are two stocks both of them give the same kind of dividends which is 10 cents a share and the stock price for example one is actually two dollars all right so therefore if you put in the if you use the formula 10 cents divided by two ringgit multiplied by 100 percent therefore your dividend use should be five percent okay so example number two dividend per share is about is 10 cents current stock price is one ringgit so therefore your dividend use is 10 percent so the idea to get high dividend use is very simple make sure you buy a good stock at its lowest possible price all right so don't chase for don't chase for a stock where it has actually flew up high all right like 200 percent 300 percent over the last six to 12 months that won't work all right if you are a dividend investor dividend investor means you buy it at the low price because remember the formula current stock price all right it's here all right so therefore you need to you need to get good stocks and make sure it's low price very important okay so that's the first formula now the second formula is this dividend payout ratio so this is the formula so we have dividend pay we have dividend per share now the difference between dividend use and dividend payout ratio is this dividend per share divide by earnings per share multiply by 100 percent and there you and there you get it dividend payout ratio so what's the significance of this particular formula now i'm going to use this example example number one all right so we have a stock all right it pays out eight cents per share in dividends and we have and then this stock actually earns 10 cents a share okay so that means you say for every dollar it make it pays out um eight cents for every dollar it make it pays out 80 cents or 80 percent of its earnings and in the form of dividends so therefore dividend payout ratio is about 80 okay example number two the same stock all right another stock it makes 10 cents a share it pays out two cents in dividends so therefore if you put in the formula dividend payout ratio is 20 percent so now here's a significant part okay so both stocks earn the same 10 cents a share one pays eight cents the other one pays two cents all right so at the end at the end of the day the stock which is at example one will actually retain two cents a share example number two the stock will actually retain eight cents a share all right the one that has two cents will have lesser money to actually invest for growth the one that has eight cents retained within the company has the money has more money or financial resources to invest for growth all right so therefore example one here all right it's for dividend stocks all right it's good for dividend investing whereas for example two this kind of stock is good for growth stocks growth investing okay now the similarity between um, people who invest for dividends and people who invest for growth is this both stocks must be highly profitable that's the similarity the key difference between the two is that one has a higher dividend payout ratio the other one has a lower dividend payout ratio the one has a high dividend payout ratio is a dividend stock the one that has a low dividend payout ratio is a growth stock okay so that is settled now step number three okay since i've actually listed down the objectives and what sort of information i need now it's time for a live demonstration so i'm going to show you a simple trick on how to save up 90 percent of your time doing your homework and research on stocks using bursa marketplace so with that let me just go to my uh let me just go to Bursa Marketplace, all right? Okay, so this is the website, Bursa Marketplace. As you can see, there are plenty of things going on. And um, if you are new to this particular website, don't be overwhelmed, all right? So the first thing that you, if you are a dividend investor, the first thing that you should click onto is this, screen your stock. So just click onto this. And what will appear is a screener 
that is built by Bursar Marketplace. Okay. Now, what would you like to screen? So, of course, we will look into stocks. And we have total matches of 936, which means to say in Malaysia, we have about 936 public listed companies listed in Bursar Malaysia. Okay. So, since we haven't even started to um, use this filter, use this screener, so therefore the total matches will be 100% of the stock, which is 936. Okay, so don't bother about all these things. If you are a dividend investor, the number one thing that you should look into is this, dividend yield. Okay, so here we have two choices. Number one, up to 5%, which means, which is anything below 5%. Number two, above 5%, okay, which is anything above 5%. So we, meaning to say for every 1,000 ringgit you invest, if you want to make more than 50 ringgit in dividend yield, then you should choose above 5%, which I'm going to click onto it right now. Now, as you can see, um, your total matches has actually dropped from 936 to 102, okay? So this has actually eliminated nearly 80% 80, 80%, all right? um, of the stocks in Malaysia. So less, so only about 10 to 20% of the stocks in Malaysia pay more than 5% in dividend yield. But as, as you can see, the total matches is actually 102. There's still plenty of shares. So what do we do? Um, for me, I will basically go to market cap. Now, what is market cap? Market cap is actually this. Um, Let's say, for example, we got Asia, all right? And Asia has a market cap of 14 billion, if I can remember to my knowledge, around 13 or 14 billion ringgit. What does that mean? That means you say if you got enough money in the whole wide world, you got so much money that you can buy the entire 100% share of Air Asia, all right? Which also includes the shareholdings of Tony Fernandez and Kamar uh, Dato Kamarudin and the rest of the minority shareholders, the price tag is 14 billion, okay? So over here, we are given three choice, up to 100 million, which is the smaller size company, up to a billion dollars, which is the mid-sized company, and AirAsia, of course, is a huge company, right? So therefore, it is above 1 billion. So usually for us, um, if you want to have stability in your uh, what do you call, in your portfolio, you can actually choose above. We can choose to be picky, but anyway, let's see how it works. All right, let's click above one billion. And right now, from 102, your total matches now has dropped to 24. Okay, so what about the rest? So basically, we don't need to actually bother about the rest because we only have. We are now down to the 24. We are now down to only 24 stocks out of 936, which is like less than 5% of the stocks already. So I think it's good enough for us to show result. Right. Okay, and of course, from these 24 stocks, not every single thing is good. All right, so that, therefore we need to back through each of them one by one. Okay, so where did we pick? Okay, so for here, you can actually slowly pick one by one, but for this particular webinar, I'm just going to start off with something which is very, very, very simple. Okay, so let me just go to, let's say, should I go with IGB? Yeah, why not? Let's go with IGB. Okay, so basically, IGB read. So reads are actually um, widely known as, um, as a category of stocks that pays out very good dividend use, but let's see. Let me go back to my um, PowerPoint slides. Now, this is um, the checklist that we need. So the first one is company profile. So how do I get to my, now I need my, what do you call? Hold on for a sec. Where do I get? Okay, I don't think I need this anymore. Okay, so first of all, we need the company profile, which is here. We can click on to read more. And it will be given here. So, Versa Marketplace has actually kindly 
put in the company profile for us and all we need to do is just read. So basically, um, it's very important for us to understand. Uh, we can't, we can't yeah? see your screen. Uh, you, you need to share your can't screen. can't see my screen. Now. Yeah. Okay. Where should I, where should I go? Uh? Mm. Um, beneath the microphone, there, there is uh, two logos. One is like a double screen. You just click on that to show your screen. Hold on. Uh. Is it this? Ah, uh? uh, yes, correct. But we can't see your okay. camera already. Okay, so where have I missed it? Uh? Um, is it here? Uh, Alright, I'm just going to go back. Sorry, Ian, we can't see your webcam also. You're off it already. Oh. Oh, no, All right. it's too big, right? Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my screen. Okay, so can any, can everyone see this uh, particular page, the IGB read page? All right. So I'm going to just continue from here, yeah? And uh, okay, so this is IGB read. I'm gonna just go straight down. This is company profile. Click on to read more because you need to know what the company, how the company, how the company actually derives its income, how the company makes its money. Very important. All right. So here, Versa Marketplace has already kindly actually put in the details for you. So I'm gonna just uh, read through. IGB read, as you know, is very simple. It derives income from two investment properties. One is Mid Valley Mega Mall. The other one is the Garden Mall. It's that simple. Okay, so some are, some are actually very easy, some are actually harder to digest. Now, the easier ones tend to be better, all right? Because you need to understand, um, if, if you can understand the company's business, what does it do and stuff like that, chances are you will understand your investment much better, okay? And I hope that this makes sense. So the first information is done. Now we move on to the next information, which is financials. Now, click on the financials. Basically, we need to we need to solve the, we need to find three things. Okay, don't bother about the key stats for now. I'm gonna just click on the income statement. Okay, there are three things that you need to actually um, make sure in order to find out that this stock is actually a good dividend stock. All right, the first one is actually this revenue. Okay. Now one, oops. Let me just uh, do adjustment here. Sorry about that. Okay, so revenue. So as you can see, we have the figures from 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So it's a five years, so it's a past five years figure. So if you can see that, um, so these figures are actually standardized in millions of Ringgit Malaysia. And uh, that means to say IGB REIT has actually made 430 million ringgit in uh, in the year of 2013, 461 million in 2014, 489 in 2015, 507 in 2016, and 525 in 2017. So if you, if you see that this is a growing trend, congratulations, you have passed um, information number two or criteria number two. Okay, and now let's move on to criteria number three, which is, um, Profits. All right, so I'm gonna just skip all this down. Okay, so we have net income. All right, so basically, usually for REITs, we don't actually use net income, lah, all right? Because the net income, um, let me just explain why. Because for properties, right, they always have this non-operating stuff, lah. All right, so I suppose all this non-operating stuff you need to actually like deduct because these are all um, capital appreciation, all right? So IGB REITs, all right, um, they receive rental income. So this rental income, after deducting the expenses, they will pay you the dividends. But for capital appreciation of the property, means to say uh, mid value has appreciated in price, right? Um, the valuer has said that, oh, this property has actually appreciated this kind of gains you won't actually get it in dividends unless the property is sold all right because it's a non-cash transaction so it's a bit harder for you to see lah. but suffice but this one suffice to say um if you can't get it here you can actually get it from the annual reports of um of igb reads all right because from there you can actually tell whether the whether the company has made a growth in uh, realized um income okay 
So I would say that from from this particular um, from Bursa Marketplace, um, it doesn't show you that particular information. But what it shows you is that on over the past five years, it has actually consistently made profits of two to three hundred million ringgit a year. So let's just let's just keep it a pass. All right, it's a good thing to have profits. Now we move on to the third one, which is cash flow. Okay, cash flow. You look at this one. This is the this is the key thing. Cash from operating activities. All right, because this is if a company shows you this. All right, like IGB read shows you three oh seven, three two two. Everything is a positive figure. Congratulations. This kind of company is um, it has generated good income, positive cash flow, and therefore it has the means to pay you dividends. And because it's a consistent basis, therefore your dividends, your dividend income can be more consistent. All right. So this is actually a very good indicator. So this is actually information number four, and we have actually cleared that. Now, how much dividend yields are, are we gonna get from um, IGBV? So let's just use key stats. Hopefully, it gives you the information that I need. Okay, so basically, I will um, for this website, I will use this dividend share COMM should be common stock primary. All right, so use this figure. That means to say, uh, IGB read, um, what you say, it pays out nine cents a share. Okay, now remember the dividend yield formula just now. So we take nine cents a share. And we divide it by the current price, which is 1.51. Okay, so let me just bring you a calculator. Or how about this? If you are listening to this webinar, you can actually pre-calculate and perhaps you can actually type in the chat box. What exactly is the what exactly is the dividend yield that I will receive if I buy IGB read at 1.51? All right, so do I have a chat box here? Mm. So Anna, do I have a, can I see what's the response yes. like? Uh, some, or, of them have you can, some of them answered that it's 5.9%. 5.9%. Ah, uh, yes, okay. So that is your gross dividend yield, lah, all right? So basically if you buy IGB read at one one fifty one, therefore you will get uh, five point nine six um percent in gross dividend yield. All right, so congratulations. Oh, okay. So yes, I have hidden my webcam. Okay, but of course for reads, um, that's a special thing that you need to actually take care of. You've got to deduct ten percent from nine uh from nine cents a share because there is withholding tax of ten percent, especially if you are individual investor like me. You will get a net of 90% from the nine cents, which is like 8.1 cents. So you so roughly you will take 8.1 cents and then you just divide it by one 1.51, 1 which is the current price, and you will get your net dividend yield. All right. So you so let's just do a simple calculation. What if you use um 8.1 cents and you divide by one dollar and fifty-one cents? What what would you get as your net dividend yield? So Anna, is there any response? Uh, haven't yet. They're still calculating. They're still calculating, huh? Yeah. Okay. Make sure that uh, at least people, at least we are. Okay. Least uh, we are got various out. answers. Uh, some is five point three, fifty three point six. Uh, actually, it's five point three six percent, uh. They they just haven't converted to percentage. Okay, lah. So it's actually five point three six, lah. So that is your dividend yield, lah. All right. Five point three six percent. Okay, so that is the that is the uh, what do you call the dividend yield. All right. Now for a dividend payout ratio, IGBV, you basically don't need to actually calculate the dividend payout ratio. Lah. It's definitely more than ninety percent. Why do I say so? Because in Malaysia, and un under the Income Tax Act, all right. Um, of course, this one you can read annual reports about it. 
any REIT that is paying more than 90% or distributes 90% of its realized income, means all the cash, cash profits and stuff like that, you, um, the, the income, right, will not be taxed at the corporate level, but at the investor, investor level, which is the rehold, which is the reholding tax. Okay. So that one, it depends on your status. Lah. So for us, individual investors, Malaysian, it's 10%. But if you're a corporation, it could be another. I mean, you say you buy IGB REITs under a corporation like Sunnyvale Berhad or stuff like that, it could be a different rate. All right. But for this webinar, let's just keep it as individual investors. All right. So with that, um, let me see whether we can actually go in, get into the next, next portion of the webinar. Yes, which is step number four. Ah, this is actually the most exciting part, which is finding stocks with growth plans. Okay, now this one, you need four documents. Okay, so just now the first three steps. Step one, objective. Step two is about the information that you need. Step three is about um, find, um, using the screener to find uh, fantastic or fantastic stocks, like fantastic dividend stocks all right that's the that's step number three step number four is about the future and in order to tell the future you need four documents all right usually at minimum the stock will actually provide you with two all right but there are some there are some um stocks whereby especially the ones that are doing very well all right or the ones that are very big they like to they will actually do this too. They will actually issue either investors presentations. They will actually prepare a PD, uh, a presentation slide like this to tell you about the company's future plans and stuff like that. Or they will actually issue a press release to tell you how the company is doing. Okay, with that, I would like to just take you on the tour to Bursa announcement. Okay. Eh, yeah, Bursa, Bursa announcement. Okay, which is here, all right? Now, if you do not know how to come here, so I'm just gonna share with you a simple tool. So let's say you do not know how to get there. I'm just gonna just uh, bring you there. Lah. So first of all, pick this website. You can just go in, you just type in, in Google Bursa Malaysia, click onto this. You arrive. Um, this this is the homepage of Bursa Malaysia, so you can just um, how do I do it? You can just go to uh, products and services. Somehow you'll find it lah. Oh, sorry, not here. Ah, it's listed companies. Okay, just click on to listed. Move your mouse to listed companies and just click on to company announcement. And there we have it. So there we are. So as you can see, Bursa Malaysia has, um, this particular website has a lot of information, all right? But we only want to find the ones that are important. So with that, choose a company and then you choose and then you choose the type of documents that you need. So first of all, you can actually go into annual report. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just show you some some um, stocks where it has a it has a growth plan, and and I'm gonna show you how it looks like. Okay. So let's say for example, let's let's do top growth lah. Okay, because they have a much nicer presentation. All right. Not necessarily mean that you should buy this stock, but um. I'm just showing you because it has this kind of information. Okay, we have top glove. So what do I mean by tangible growth, growth plan is this? Okay, after you look at the company's profile, the financials and stuff like that, you want to know how the company is going to use to actually make money in the future. So therefore, you go to this one, this particular segment, which is letters, or letter to stakeholders and management discussion and analysis. So this one could be, okay, usually it's either called chairman statement or CEO statement, 
or management discussion and analysis or CFO st statements or whatsoever. Why would you read it? Because it contains a lot of gems, a lot of um, a lot of insights on how the company is going to grow in the future. So I'm going to just jump queue and go straight to that particular portion. Of course, in this kind of documents, it has to actually explain how it has fared in the past. Okay. And usually the future will be somewhere in the somewhere at the back. Okay. Like for example, outlook and priorities for 2018. All right. So this one will tell you exactly what the company is going to foresee in the future. And therefore you should actually read this kind of stuff. Okay. And let me just go up and see whether we we got other things to actually uh we got other things where we can actually glean on to. Okay, this is the second part that I would like to bring you. All right, some people actually put it corporate developments. So this is a place where you can actually find whether the stock has the capacity, has the plan to actually grow in the future. So like for example, Top Globe will continue to expand strategically. Okay, so what does it do? It, it's organic expansion plans include the construction of two new manufacturing facilities. So all these things, all right, this is, a, this is the kind of information that I would like to see if I'm a growth investor because the more assets, the more businesses is going to invest into, the more income it's going to make. And therefore, that is what a good growth stock is, all right? It's a stock that continues to invest for growth. So make sure you read this um, before you actually invest, okay? Now, sometimes, all right, if, if you can see, this annual report is for the financial year 31st August 2017, but we want to know the latest plan, okay? The latest plan, which is um, March 2000, the closest date to clo the closest date to March, um, March 6, yeah, March 6. So how do we do that? So with that, we will go into, let's say, financial results. Click onto this. Okay, click onto financial results. Why? Because this is where you get all the quarterly reports. Okay. If you want the annual, click onto annual reports. If you want the, if you want the quarterlies, click onto financial results. Click onto submit. Click onto the latest one. Okay, which is for 30 November. Okay, you can cling on to it. You can read the, the latest updates of the company. But more importantly, you can actually find this particular information. Commentary on prospects and targets. Okay, so this is a place where you can actually read the latest um, updates of the company, which is the second one. Now, this is the third document. Okay, so this is the press release, and of course, um, this will actually contain information about the company, about its future growth plan. And the final one, which is investors' presentation. Um, this one usually, most of it, right, um, uh, Singapore Singapore usually have a lot of this kind of information. Uh, but Malaysia, let me just think. Uh, uh, okay, I know one already because I just downloaded the company. I'm just going to show you how the how the thing looks like. That's all. Mm. Let's see publications. Ah, see this? Sometimes you can go to the individual company's um, website and you can actually download the latest presentation. Okay, and then you have the PDF files. And then this is where the company will actually tell you whether it will invest in the future or not. Okay, so this is actually a very um, helpful tool for you to actually decipher whether this is a good company or not. Usually good companies will actually give you this kind of uh, information so that you don't, need to, you don't need to actually spend a lot of time reading, all right? So it's a good, so it's, it shows good, good investor relations, lah, all right? So this is actually the seven information. And finally, oh, I got only 10 minutes. Actually, I got so much to share. 
The final one is actually price trend. So let's go back to my slides. So I better speed it up. The final step is to have a trading plan. Now, this one is actually very important because um, number one, you want to buy at the lowest possible price. Okay, so therefore you need to have a trading plan, a basic tra trading plan so that you can do two things. Number one, avoid stocks that um, they are overpriced. Okay, because you, don't, you do not want to overpay for a stock. That's the first one. The second one is to um, buy a stock at its lowest possible price because low price means high dividend use. All right, so if you want to beat my average of 6.8%, then you need to buy it at a really lower price, lower than mine, okay? Now, basically, stock prices move in three directions, all right? So it's a fallacy for you to actually believe that every stock that you buy will go up. It's a fallacy, and it's, um, it's, a, fantasy or it's a fantasy as well. It moves in three trends. Number one, uptrend. Number two, downtrend. Number three, sideways trend. So personally for me, all right, I will always want to find stocks that will go on the uptrend. Okay, so this is actually so this is actually the basic lah. All right, but before we go into that, I will also like to share with you the three stages of the price trend because every single price trend has its stages. So the three stages are as followed: the beginning stage, the middle stage, and the end stage. Okay, so when do I buy? When do I sell? So unfortunately for today, I haven't really actually sell anything because all the stocks that I buy are dividend machines, all right? So they are dividend paying kind of stocks. So I don't want to sell because they continue to make money um, over time. So that's very good. Now, when it comes to buy, okay, I may want to buy at the uptrend, but I let's say for example, this is the price chart. This is an uptrend. I do not want to buy at the peak of an uptrend. I would like, ideally, money is made when you buy at the lowest possible price. So therefore, I would like to buy uh, when the stock is either at the beginning stages of an uptrend or at the end of a downtrend. So this is my basic trading plan. And this is what I would like to do, all right? And how do I do that? So I'm gonna just go back to Bursa Marketplace where I can show you how it's done. So let's go back. I think I'm gonna just use this. So basically, this is the chart. In order, in order to actually identify price trend, it's very simple. Number one, click on the charts. Number two, there are price charts, candlesticks, and technical indicators. Okay. So this is the price chart. And usually by default, all right, it's on a three months basis. Um, all right. So what I will do is I will actually lengthen this, okay? I will lengthen this graph. If you are a long-term investor, you will always want to look at the long-term price performance of this particular stock. The bottom one is volume, all right? So sometimes you can actually tell something about the volume, all right? So for example, if the stock is consistently on demand, that means it's a good times, bad times, people buy and sell these stocks, then you will see this kind of bar chart um, pretty vibrant, all right? More vibrant than this, actually. If you see a stock whereby people suddenly know about it, hey, you should buy this, don't know what stock, all right? Then everyone rush in to buy this particular stock. So that means, so when it comes to volume, right, what will happen is that you have a lot of empty, empty bars here or very low bars. Then suddenly there's a sharp spike in the volume because everyone go and rush in and buy okay so this is what you need to be aware of okay we want a stock that is sustainable so you want a stock which is uh, where the investment community knows about it okay so if you look at the volume like this it's bolela all right now this is the this is the price trend so it went it goes up it goes down okay if you want to track the midterm price trend of the stock, just click on the technical indicators, whereby you will be given simple moving averages, exponential moving averages, and of course, MACD. Now, if you do not know, if you do not understand what is simple moving averages, exponential moving averages, and MACD, don't worry about it, okay? If you do not 
um, if you do not understand about this and you think that, hey, I want to go get into trading, then this is then this webinar is actually for you. It's for you, it's to tell you not to get into trading first. Make sure you learn what these three things are first, then only you get into trading. Okay. Personally, I don't use MACD. All right. I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna explain what is MACD. All right. For long-term or mid-term investors, we'll use simple moving averages. Exponential moving averages, um, this one is for shorter term investors, lah, all right? So for mid to long term, we use simple moving average. Now the super long term kind of investors will go with 200 days. All right, 200 days simply means it tracks the price performance of a stock for 200 days. If it's 100 days, then it's 100, okay? If it's 60, 60, 50, 50, 40, 40, okay? Now for me, I will do, I will click onto this. This will help me to track the 40 days, which is the short term trend. As you can see, once I click onto it, all right, there's a black line that pops out like this. And I need to lengthen my graph again. And I will click onto 100 days. So this technique is called the simple moving average, the SME crossover method. So I'm going to just I would I think I will cover this um I believe I will cover this in more in depth in future webinars of uh Basal Malaysia I think all right I will actually explain the whole mechanism in greater detail okay although my core is still on fundamental analysis but anyway for a short I'm going to just lengthen the graph so that you can actually I can explain in brief how you can actually make this information make use of this information better now the blue line is actually the actual stock price. The black color line is actually the 40 day line. And then the green line is actually the 100 day line. So if you do not, if you're new to SMA crossover method, just bear with me. Just try to absorb as much as, as, as much as I can possibly share. Okay. Now, if you see the blue line actually go up, right, which means the stock price has actually increased. Can you see that the black line is above the, the green line? All right, so in order to tell whether the stock price is moving on an uptrend or downtrend, if the black line, which is the 40 day line, moves above the 100 day line, it's an uptrend. All right, that's the first thing. The second thing is all the three lines, the blue, the black, and the green, all move upwards. So that's the second indicator that I will look at to confirm that IGB read or any stock at the moment is actually moving on an uptrend. Now, how do you spot the downtrend? Now, can you see this? The green line actually moves on top of the black line, which is different from this, where the black is moving on top of the green. Here, the green is moving on top of the black. So therefore, this is the first sign that I look at when I spot the downtrend. Now, second thing is all three lines move downwards. So basically, if I look at this, um, so I can safely say that, yes, IGB rate is moving on a downtrend, okay? So at this moment, it's on a downtrend. In the past, it's an uptrend. Now, the next question is this. How do I know that an uptrend in stock price will eventually give way to a downtrend? All right. This is not by means a 100% indicator, but it's good in itself. I think it will help you um it will give you some tools like some guidelines all right usually technical indicators no technical tools in the whole wide world all right not from Bursa marketplace not even from anybody all right can give you a hundred percent pure accuracy kind of a uh, uh, indication okay it's not a fail proof thing all right but it's a good guide so now, how do you go? How do you know whether this uptrend will move into a downtrend? So you look at this particular thing. It's called the crossover. That's why the name of the, the technical analysis tool is called the crossover, which means initially this is the black and the black move on top of the green. Now the green actually move on top of the black. So this is actually the first sign. All right, the first sign of uh, of an uptrend moving on the downtrend. Okay, as you can see. If this is if this is happening, all right, there's a there's a chance perhaps the the shares will actually drop in price. That's number one. Number two, 
can you see that it the uptrend has actually slowed down all right if the uptrend is slowing down all right chances are it will move either to a sideways trend or a downtrend okay so this one is actually um, my tips my tools that I that I use to actually identify roughly the midterm price trend of a stock so hopefully you can hopefully you have understand how um, you have actually learned a, a thing or two about how you can actually um, profit consistently from the stock market and um, let's let me go back to my slides let's see what else I have to share oh no more already so in summary five things number one if anything at all know your objective why why are you in the stock market how do you intend to make money and whether you have the skills for it or not skills and time for it number two the information that you need make sure you have them build a checklist lah. build a checklist of information so that you can actually source for information accurately and much more precisely it will save you a lot of trouble number three um use the screener okay if you don't have time use the screener provided by Busan, Busan marketplace because it's going to save you a lot of time number four um number four is to always look at the company's um annual reports or the quarterly reports to find out what the company is going to do with your money to grow in the future if the company has a growth plan is ambitious to grow your money will also uh will most likely will grow lah, all right that's the that's the hidden tip and the fifth one is actually to have a basic trading plan so that you don't overpay for your stock and make sure you buy stocks at their lowest possible price so with that thank you so much and i think we can start doing the q a session so anna are we ready all right thank you ian it was an awesome session so uh let me take back the screen first All right, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, I can All see right. your screen. Okay, give me a moment. Huh? All right, now time for Q&A session. Mm -hmm. All right, the first question we have is, let me see. All right, how do you get financial report from Busan Malaysia? Oh, um, then you have to give me back the screen. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll have to show you. Okay, I'll read this. Uh, okay, can I, I read? Uh, give me, give you. <laughs> all right, can you see? Okay, you got the. You got the. Yeah, and then I think. Okay, yeah. let me. I think just now I thought I, I, I show you, but never mind. Uh, I'm going to just do it all one, one more time, yeah? Okay, where is the. Where is the place? Um, I need to go to my website. Wait, wait. Who can see? You can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So here we are again. Hey, wait. Let me just show you. So basically, this is the end product of just now's um, webinar. So I'm going to just do a quick demo. Let's say you do not know how to navigate through the Sum Malaysia website. Just type in the Sum Malaysia. Click on to market. Um, find this word listed companies company announcements click on to company announcements see the category here um, click on to annual reports if you want the annual financial statements click on to financial results if you want the quarterly financial statements Choose the company that you want. Let's say you have a company in mind. Let's say Air Asia. Click Submit. And it will give you a list of annual reports that have been filed in to Bursa Malaysia. There you go. That's how you get your financial reports. Anna, next okay. question. Awesome. The next question is, how do you rank the three components of market? Time, volume, and price, and why? How, Sorry, do you, time? how do you rank the three components of market? Time, volume, price. And why do you rank it that way? Time, volume, and price. First of all, I will look at... Uh, okay, I'm not too sure what, what time is. Uh, first of all, I'll look at price. All right? But, be, but before I look at price, 
my greatest, my, my biggest emphasis is not actually the tree. My biggest emphasis is profits. All right, the, the stock that I buy, whether it's growth or dividend, usually dividend growth, lah, all right? Um, actually, if you invest for dividends, right, you can actually get really good capital gains as well. Um, but anyway, with that said, the number one thing that people should look into first is the profits of the company, not exactly the price, the time, or the stuff like that. So make sure you have profits first. Now, with that said, once you have taken care of the profits issue, that means to say the stock has delivered and will, and you think that the company has um, is capable of uh, delivering good profits in the future, then we look at price, okay? So profits up, share price down, good idea, all right? Very good. You can, I will actually personally uh, look into this share even more, okay? Volume is not really my consideration because volume is just there to tell me whether this stock, um, in good times or bad times, whether the stock is, um, whether there are people buying or, buying or selling the shares or not. Lah. Okay, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to rank that as my greatest importance. And as of time, market, let's say, let's see if I get this right. If this is about market timing, uh, like I said, uh, I just want to, I just don't want to overpay for my stocks. All right. I always want to buy cheap. I, I want to buy stocks when they are undervalued. So with that, okay. So with that said, I would like to actually, uh, what do you call? I will do the price trend analysis. Like, like just now what I did, the technical analysis, the SME crossover method. All right. As long as the stock is not at its peak price, it's actually far, far away from its peak price. That's a very good sign. If it's actually trading at its highest possible price, then it's not really a good sign for me. Lah. Um, that's definitely a no-no. Okay, so there you go. Okay. I will rank profits, price, uh, time, then the last one is volume. Yeah. Mm. All right, excellent. And next question we have is, please recommend good books for fundamental analysis. Okay. Um, all right. It depends. Uh, all right. There are plenty of good books. Okay. Uh, it depends. There are, if you are talking about American books, I will actually recommend Pat Dorsey. Um, it's a, it's actually, let's see. Uh, um, unless you, do I share, do I share how do you get the books or? Yeah, sure. Sure. Do I go? Yeah, sure. Yeah, please so, go ahead. Okay, how do I do that? Um, in that case, let's go Amazon. Lah. All right, let's let's go Amazon. Go for it and go and do a bit of shopping. Lah. All right. Should I go pet or see? Ah, this is the book. Okay, I got the book cover. So this is the one, the five rules for stock, the five rules for successful stock investing. So if you're looking at, at American books, so this is one that I highly recommend. Okay. And uh, if you're looking at, let's say, regional, let's say ASEAN, Malaysia or Singapore, um, you can go with Adam Kula, all right. So this one, this one you can actually you can actually what do you call uh you can actually get this book lah. so i think this one is also quite well written all right and of course um i not to mention you can actually look at a few more books let me see where i can find it or not value growth investing okay this is my friend's book so it's rusmin ang and victor ching so basically, it's called value investing in growth companies. So if you're into um, capital gains investing, you can actually look into value invest, value investing in growth companies. And of course, if you want something which is more um, more recent, all right. So we have this is also another of my friend's book. So my friend Stan has actually written a book which is called. Value investing in Asia. So this is actually the latest one. 
And uh, of course, you can actually grab, you can actually grab some of this. And of course, I'm also promoting his book uh, in my own website. So you can actually use my own link. Uh, let's go to my website. So I actually have a bookstore. Just click on the digital books. And, and of course, you can read about a little bit about my reviews and what you are expecting to get. And of course, you can actually click on to this link to get my friend's book. All right. So these are all physical books. Lah, all right. And you can actually grab it. So for Malaysian ones, it depends. Lah, all right. So for myself, I personally do write some ebooks here and there. But I write on really, really specific topics. Okay. Very niche. I personally will write on something which is really, really niche. Like for example, intrinsic value. How do you calculate intrinsic value? So this one, this one is more on the Malaysian side, lah. Okay, the Malaysian Singapore ultimate guide on how to calculate intrinsic value. So I will actually write something which is really, really niche. Uh, All right. So you Excellent. can actually consider any of these choices, lah. Will be great. Yeah, so that you have a lot of choice for the books. Now, for the yeah. next question is that how come 10% withholding tax paid cannot claim for income tax reduction? This one, I think we have to consult the tax consultant. Uh, in, uh, <laughs> because I'm not, a, I'm not a tax consultant. So number one, I don't really set the, the income tax rate. This one is um, the, L, the LH. LHDN is the one setting it, so it's not me. Um, so that's the that's the first thing. Number the second thing is um, uh, this ten percent we cannot. This ten percent we, I don't think we can claim back. Uh. from my experience, this one right. Um, because you have a brokerage account, you buy let's say a read lah, and then okay, I buy reads, and then the dividend is due. The dividend by the time you receive your dividend right, it's already net of net of the withholding tax of 10% because I'm a Malaysian individual investor. So my rate is 10%. So therefore I will get the remaining 90% of the income. So it's like, um, so that's why when I calculate the net yield, all right, I already factor in that I will be paying the 10% withholding tax. Uh. So as to why, why this withholding tax, right? It's because number one, at the corporate level, which means at I'm going to show you an annual report, lah, all right, just to, you know, so just to like, um, one. welcome to my, uh, I'm going to just show you, okay, lah, I need, um, let's say this one. Lah. Okay, so this is the annual financial statement of a REIT, all right? So this is Pavilion REIT now. So you will get the rental income, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, after they have uh, recorded the transactions, right? Finally, at the final point, can you see this tax expense? All right, you can do your, you can check it out on other REITs. Lah. If you find that, uh, you have income before tax, which is this figure. And then we have the final figure, which is tax expense, nothing. All right. So this means to say the this particular income, all right, uh, it will be broken, first broken into two, realize and unrealized. Like just now I say, just now in Bursa, market, Bursa Marketplace, you don't have this realized and unrealized thing. Can you see that the... Realize and unrealized thing is two different things. Realize is cash. Unrealized is not cash. All right. So it's not shown on the Bursa marketplace somehow. Lah, all right. I don't, that one also, I do not know why. That's why I read the annual reports because I want to know the cash returns. I want to know exactly the cash profits that the company is making, the read is making. Okay. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is back to the tax issue. I'm going to go straight into note 14 so that I can actually explain to you how it, how it works. Okay, so can you see this? This um, 
Okay, so we have the text. And then nothing, right? So I'm going to go scroll down. So this is the Malaysian Income Tax Act 1967. Income of pavilion rate will be exempted from tax provided that at least 90% of the total income as defined in the act. You can ask your tax consultant about it. It's, it's distributed to the investors in the basis period for the year assessment within two months after the close of the financial year. So, so you can read this to actually have a much, be much better uh, understanding about the tax treatment for REITs. But suffice to say, for this particular webinar, just know this. It's number one, it's not taxed at the corporate level. Number two, the income, um, once it's distributed, it depends on who you are as an investor, individual or corporation. If it's individual like me, 10%. If it's um, others, uh, that one, I think I got the information. Yeah, I just, something just pop up. La. I think this axis we got, got, got right. La. It's somewhere down here. Ah, there, there you go. How do I calculate my distribution? So thanks. Thank you so much, Axis Rate, for coming out with this. Now it depends from the income. It depends who is the recipient of the income. Is it um, resident, uh, resident individual, foreign corporate, foreign, in, foreign institution, or foreign individual? Okay, so it depends on the who is the uh, who is the recipient of the of the read, uh, of the income from the read? Then the net distribution is accordingly. All right. So Anna, I think it's back to you lah. If All you want right. to calculate, just just download this report lah, and you'll get an idea. All right. Awesome. Okay. The next question is about dividend yield. So uh, uh -huh. our attendee is asking, the dividend yield shown in BUSA is for last dividend yield. How about historical mm -hmm. dividend yield for the past three or five years? Um, okay, so let's see. Yeah. Let's explore this thing together. Lah. All right. Usually, I'm, I only use BUSA Marketplace for the price trend and stuff like that because it has the free tools and stuff. Um, for this one... I don't think it has lah. Uh, at least I couldn't find it somewhere here lah. That's why I only, that's why I only like go with um, last dividend. No, it's actually what is this? This is dividend. You need give you the annual dividend, five years average. Um, let's check income statement. Let me just double confirm whether it has it or not. Oh, it has. So it's here. So I found it. So it's a uh, dividend per DPS, which stands for dividend per share, common stock, primary issue. Nine cents, nine cents, eight, eight, seven. Actually, it's from right to left, lah. All right, because the right one is, uh, well, uh, the right one is actually at the, at five is actually five years ago. The later one is actually at the center of the screen, lah. So that means you say this stock has been paying out. Um, dividends consistently and more dividends as time goes by. La. So, this, uh, so this is actually definitely a good idea. La. So last time it pays seven cents, now it pays nine cents. La. All right. Okay. All right. So that's how you can check for your dividend yield. All right. The next uh -huh. question is about REITs, which is your forte. Mm -hmm. So they are asking the share price of REITs have fallen very much recently. What happened? Should be the BRL, uh, it should be the OPR, uh, I, I suppose. Uh, all right, because um, OPR, go, OPR go up, of course, the borrowing costs, the, bo the borrowing costs will actually go up, right? And uh, because, no, like in like in Malaysia, like logically speaking, uh, um, people, don't buy prop people don't buy property with 100% cash, all right? Not everyone is that rich. Even if you're that rich or so, you still tend to borrow to buy properties. Okay, so what happened is that every single read in Malaysia and as well in, as okay lah, let's just talk about Malaysia lah. Every single read in Malaysia has borrowings, all right. So therefore, and the borrowings will go up to millions depending on what sort of reads. Okay, now um, 
So therefore, if the read the bow rings, okay, now there's two types of rates. Some actually use fixed rate. Some use floating rate. So you got to check. You got to check um, um, what is the proportion like. All right. If a if a read has fixed rate, most of its loan in fixed rate, then at least it's not as badly impacted. But if the read has a lot of uh, borings, um, fixed at floating rate means it's it's affected because of the OPR and stuff like that. Then of course um, the people may foresee that the read will actually generate lesser income and therefore um, there will be disappointments when it comes to the di the distribution okay so this is what so this is what um, could be la, could be happening what people may foresee and therefore they just sell off the sell off the stock la. but for me from an investor point of view uh, I like it when these things happen la, because um, last time if I want to buy any read it's any Malaysian read it's very it's very expensive as compared to uh, Singapore reads because last time the dividend yield is about like uh, 4.5 5.5 6 um, at most you can only get about six seven percent lah all right so if you want to achieve my kind of 6.8 percent very hard to do for Malaysian read lah but now um, good chance lah all right like just now you calculate IGB read even at 1.5 at the price of 1.51 the read is about 5.3 percent if I buy at 5.3 percent and my U is my own portfolio is at 6.8 percent I buy this stock I will jeopardize my own average yield lah, then not so nice already but now the lower the price like IGB read it drops in price then uh, then it's more enticing it's more attractive that's why i say low price is good ma all right but who knows the future right or not the bank the government malaysia uh they might remain they might retain the opr at 3.25 which is the current rate or it will increase to 3.5 or it will go back to 3.0 who knows the future but anyhow i believe that property is still property lah the same property, Mid Valley and the Gardens, uh, people will still go there and shop. Lah, and the uh, people who do business there will still be most likely there. Lah, okay? You still can go for your Starbucks coffee there. You still can go and dine there, meet people there, shop there. Everything is there. Lah, all right? It's still a money-making business. So fundamentally, it's okay. It's just that um, it's just that whether in the future the OPR rate will improve or not improve in the future. That's all, Nila. Hello, Anna. Yeah. All right. Okay. Excellent. So our next question is uh, let me try and understand. Uh, okay. Uh, he is asking that how do we choose a proper counter to invest in? Because uh, after mm -hmm. filter, you still have uh, left a few choices of counter. Okay, sorry, repeat again. How do how, I... How do you choose a suitable counter to invest in as mm -hmm. it has 24 filter by screener? Mm. Good question. The first idea is this. Um, I'm not too sure how many people of you here have unlimited capital, but I'm sure most of you, if you're listening, you may have limited capital, okay? So the first idea about investing is this. Number one, you want to maximize your return from your limited capital okay so maximizing return means to say at least you must make it count that means to say whatever counter you buy whatever stocks you buy it must be profitable so in order to be profitable you cannot first look at the stock price all right because um you cannot because you cannot make any sort of decision by looking at the stock price first that's why it's very important that's why I show you the how to how to look at the income statement first. All right, at least the basics lah. Like this one, revenue goes up, very good. Okay. The profits goes up. Where's the profits thing? Okay. The profits are there, very good. 
the dividends per share go up very good all right these are all these are all common sense stuff like you know a lot of stocks they may not have so you don't need to buy them um just forget about them uh, um because they don't have cash flow now. um like this one has cash flow so very good so look at all these sales profits dividends cash flow balance sheet strength all right not uh, i would say if you can do this these things you will actually eliminate 90 percent of the stock all right you can actually flush them down into the drain all right so first of all if you flush them down you will reduce you will minimize your risk lah, of uh, investing all right you become a very conservative kind of investor that's number one number two whatever you buy um, there will be profits the question now is how much are you willing to pay to actually buy the shares of a profitable company so an attractive investment is uh, uh, let me rephrase a good stock or a good investment is only good if the thing is if the thing is good and it's cheap all right let me give you an analogy it's like going to the supermarket to buy fish you know you have first of all like uh, if you accompany your mom or your girlfriend or your wife to a supermarket the first thing you look at is the quality of the fish whether the fish is fresh or not fresh if it's not fresh whatever price you put there also no use because the fish is not edible it's not fresh anymore all right if the fish is fresh then only we look at the price all right usually um aunties were aunties are very good in telling uh, whether the price is good whether the price is good or not lah, all right if the if the fish is overpriced they will know if the fish is cheap then they will buy more then of course uh for the families you get more fish to eat lah. so if you think like that you will do very well in the stock market right anna hello are you there Hello, Anna. Are you there with me? Can you hear me? Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 I can. Okay. So, next question is Is there anywhere we can get the average PE of a stock? Some IB reports have this information which I find helpful. Uh, that one is like promoting my own website already, but then, but then that's, 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 out of the, that's out of the case. Okay, of course, one, one of them is. One of them is uh, with my website because I do calculate them. Okay, number two is of course you can actually look into the company's reports. Some don't have it. You know why? Because they don't have E to begin with. It's price to earnings ratio. First thing you need to look at is whether the company has earnings or not. That's why I, my emphasis is on profits. So only if the company has earnings, then we can have PE ratio. So a lot of stocks, they don't have consistent earnings. Therefore, it's redundant for them to put the PE ratio because it's like, um, discour it's like discouraging people to buy like that lah, because you don't even have a PE ratio to begin with. Okay, so only the, so some companies, they are very good, they are highly profitable. Then, of course, they can put lah, you know, because they want to put. They can put, they can calculate nicely for you. And of course, it's a good, it's usually a good sign. Lah, all right. Um, you can actually check out um, annual reports or alternatively, I, I'm not too sure which um, which particular website lah, you can actually try. I'm not too sure, maybe, uh, but I never really use this. I never use any other tools apart from my own tool. Lah, like, uh, some other, some other people may use KLSE screener or i3 investor or something like that lah. but I'm not too sure lah because uh, you need to know how to use them to make good use of them all right that's why I think lah. Okay. it's best to do your own calculation it's actually worth the time to do it on your own yes I agree on that okay let's uh, wrap up and We'll go to the last two questions. Uh, the okay. next one is asking about companies are going to 
decrease stock price after they have paid dividend. What is the point they pay dividends? Um, it de actually it de it depends. Okay. Uh, how do I answer this? How do I answer this question? Okay. Okay. So in the short term, let's say for example, um, there's a stock, and then the price is like one dollars, and then of course, and then it says, okay, I will be declaring let's say two cents in dividends. All right. So of course, um. Uh, there will be people who will there are some stocks that will have the tendency or the possibility that it will rise to one dollar one dollar and two cents and then after it has paid the dividends or whether or other or after that the of after the cutoff date lah, all right i suppose then the, the stock price will drop back to one dollars right um this one for me i don't think is a big i don't think it's a big issue lah, all right because um, it's just a that one is just a small glitch in terms of um, in terms of price. Um, for me, my perspective is always on the long term because it depends on ultimately on reason number one, the objective of why you want to buy the stock. All right. What? How do you how do you intend to actually profit? Is it just a is it you buy one? You buy the stock and then you just wait for it to go up and then you sell all right or is it a recurring thing whereby you buy the stock and then you it keeps giving you it keeps giving you dividends regardless whether the stock price goes up or down you still get your dividends so your objective is still very important so i think um if you have the perspective of this if you have this big picture in place then of now of course this small little uh this this um particular issue um, is actually quite uh, neglig negligent lah, all right negligible in if you have this kind of perspective lah, all right but of course if you have a different objective then what you have what you ask could be something um, significant lah, all right something to look at but of course to me for to me um, I don't see this as a big very big uh, issue lah. so that's my take on it all right okay excellent mm -hmm. So our last question for tonight. Mm -hmm. mm, let me see. Okay, let me find a question first. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it isn't getting foreign dividend like dividend mm -hmm. from Singapore stocks costly because uh -huh. of the high handling fees and foreign fees as compared to Malaysia? It's more expensive than Malaysia. Yes, um, that's why if you want to buy Singapore Singapore shares, all right, um, I buy dividends because number one, you have to earn back your brokerage fee, lah, all right. Because in Malaysia, you buy you can buy shares. Uh, the transaction fee can be low. It depends on which broker you go to, lah, all right. So there are many brokers which actually offer offers pretty attractive um, fees. You can check out like. Places like Rakuta, Rakuten Trade la, is a new boy. That one I think is not too bad lah. Okay, the the fees are actually quite cheap lah. All right, so which makes it, which makes it um uh encouraging for trading. Now for Singapore shares, from our point of view, because we are Malaysians, uh the brokerage fee can be quite expensive. So therefore, I make it a point. If you want to go in to Singapore, you got to buy in bulk. All right, that's the first one. You got to bring your transaction costs down. Okay, so let's say for example, the per transaction, the brokerage fee is about 30 sin dollar. All right, so if you want to keep your brokerage fee under one, 1%, one 1% of the investment value, then we take 30 sin dollar divided by 1%, which is like 3,000 sin dollar. Which means you say every time you buy, you may want to invest about nine thousand, nearly nine thousand ringgit per transaction. So if you're investing that kind of, if you're investing nine thousand dollars, all right. If it's a big amount for you, then you have to go with dividends because you have to earn back your investment capital. You have to somehow earn back something lah. All right. So if you try to trade in Singapore, try to do the 
oh, I want to buy and I want to buy and then I want to sell. It will cost you a, a lot of money. All right. That's why I don't. That's why um, it depends on what kind of game you're into. Lah, all right. And that's why knowing your objective is very important. Now, when it comes to hand, handling fees, the good, there are handling fees. Um, for example, for me, the Maybank, I'm using Maybank IB. Okay. So per distribution, the handling fees, I think it should be around uh, five ringgit, lah, around there. Lah, okay. So if you buy in bulk, then the handling fees will be very, very uh, minute very small and insignificant as to compare to if you actually invest uh, in smaller quantities. Lah. Let's, say you, let's say you buy only, instead of investing 3,000, you only invest uh, 500 uh, sin dollar. Then of course, it's going to be very significant. It will eat up your dividend yield and stuff like that. So I think, so that's why um, in order to reduce the percentage of your handling fees number one you can actually buy in bulk number two you can actually do repeat purchases so if you want to do repeat purchases then you have to make sure that the company that you invest in is highly profitable and is the type that can actually really pay you good dividend yields and uh, that is very important at least to me all right that's how i make that's how the that's how you can actually really really make very good consistent flow of passive income over the long term all right 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 mm. all right excellent thank you ian for tonight's webinar session before we wrap up our session tonight let me get to the next slide which is the next webinar uh, for the next webinar we'll be talking about the principles of value investing so uh, actually tonight's questions a lot of people also ask about value investing and how do you select stocks uh, and invest them so uh, this one we will cover in our next session and uh, mm -hmm. the time and date will be on the 3rd of april and time will be on 8 30 and below this is the registration link so uh, what i'll do is I'll copy the registration link now and put in the chat box. So for those of you who are interested, you can register. Lah. Okay, let me see. Okay, you should receive the registration link already. So remember to register if you want to listen to this webinar. Uh, and for those of you, if you have any questions, you can email to Ian at hello at busaking.com.my. Uh, we still have a lot of questions, uh, very overwhelming. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tonight's session and hope to see you in the next webinar. So good night and have a good evening. Oh, right. no, Agna, right? Yes. Agna? Yes. Uh, can I uh, add on a bit? Uh? Yes, sure. All right. Instead of hello at busaking.com.my, you can actually do this. I have another email, uh, I think, because usually I go and check my personal email. So if you've got any questions, you can actually go to Ian Tai at Ian Tai triple eight at gmail.com. So you may put that in the the what they call the chat box. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to actually connect with anyone who asks questions and any one of you. Lah. Yes. All right, that's about it. Thank you so but much. Yeah. I will also type your email in the chat box and everyone should be able to see it. So if you have anything, you can also email him at the email that I typed in the chat box. Huh? Okay. So, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, have a good evening and see you at the next webinar. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.